So you want to be an industrial engineer. After all, maximizing every last drop of efficiency out of any process worldwide is pretty awesome. Let's uncover the unseen aspects of industrial engineering, the technologies that they use, the real life everyday tasks, the salary, and the lesser known secrets that make it so unique. It's time to discover what it means to be an industrial engineer and give it to you straight. This is the reality of industrial engineering. Put simply, these engineers mix problem solving and business savvy to optimize all different types of systems and processes. In essence, they use engineering principles to make things work better, faster, and smarter for manufacturing, healthcare, aerospace, and almost any other industry you can think of. This can consist of placing orders for parts, altering the layout for manufacturing processes, and even designing safe and efficient procedures for factory workers. Let's take a look at a grocery store for example. Teams of industrial engineers meticulously design entire 40,000 square foot layouts to minimize the time it takes for you to find your favorite cereal or improve the checkout process to reduce waiting times. You might be wondering how they accomplish this. Do they just stare at different layouts until an idea pops into their heads? Although this type of open brainstorming does occur, they also achieve their optimizations by crafting mathematical models and software programs, inputting situational details to the model, and receiving out and interpreting the best possible cases for the current situation. To visualize this, let's take a look at an Amazon warehouse. Say they need to ship out thousands of different products a day. You might think it's best to put the most commonly shipped items closest to the loading dock. But what if another item is really heavy and has a high relative cost for moving it across the warehouse? Moreover, would you want a team of people moving this product or someone with a forklift? How could you package it so that you don't have to be as careful when moving it? You can see how it quickly gets really complicated and this is where industrial engineers turn to mathematical models. This all starts with an objective function, something that can be as simple as minimizing cost. Then they define parameters and constraints for things like delivery time, operator man hours, and shipping costs, and fill all this information into a software mathematical model likely written in Python Groovy or Express. Then, voila! The program spits out the most ideal cases for your warehouse. Of course, there are trade-offs between decisions, which is where our industrial engineer comes in and analyzes and decides upon the best cases. Which is pretty awesome. And if you like this quick view into industrial engineering, just wait until we deep dive into a real-life industrial engineering process later in the video. But before we get there, we have to see the foundational skills that these engineers need to know to boost themselves into one of these wizards of efficiency. Let's get right into it. To start, there are a few university paths that lead to industrial engineering. Of course, you have your industrial engineering degree, but many other engineering degrees end up as industrial engineers as well. For example, electrical engineers that have deep understandings of the cell phone industry could be great industrial engineers at, say, iPhone warehouses. Now that that's understood, let's get into that industrial curriculum. Kicking it off with a crowd pleaser, the industrial systems design course mirrors real world industrial design scenarios. We'll get a deeper look into this process later in the video, but for a short example, students can find themselves doing year long projects analyzing something like the systems of an ice cream truck. They'll get into how the product is stored, how much goes to waste, how deliveries are transported, who decides the price, what is the optimal order quantity, and so much more. One really cool part about this course is that many universities give actual projects from real companies, so you get to gain real experience with real life problems and solutions. Next up, we have operational research. Usually the first case in this course is literally to make a piece of toast. Yes, I'm serious, making a piece of toast, but not actually just making it. Students fill out an operation sheet for every little step of making toast. What is the order of actions? Where do you place the bread, butter, and plate? Are there simultaneous jobs like taking out the plate while the toast is toasting? These are all things our industrial students have to consider. Even though it seems silly, this task gives you a perspective of the complexity that comes with optimizing even a simple little piece of toast. Following that, this course scales up to bigger operations with things like airport management. Students learn how to systematically approach these operations by cutting it into portions like airport scheduling, baggage handling, and security procedures to create the optimal and efficient passenger experience. Now at the core of your industrial degree is inventory planning courses. Here, students gain insight into different approaches to managing inventory, optimizing supply chains, and navigating the complexities of demand forecasting. To accomplish this, students again work with diverse mathematical models in Excel to easily lay out and analyze data. This course is highly relevant in real life because, well, most businesses keep an inventory, meaning that most companies need an industrial engineer to weigh the options of which parts and materials to keep in their limited stock rooms, to engineer which companies to source every individual piece from, and how to do it and when to do it, and to be able to aptly predict when more resources will be needed. But all this predicting can't be accomplished without statistics, right? Right. 
Stochastics is our next group of courses and are widely important for industrial engineers. They dive into the world of probability, randomness, and uncertainty within industrial systems. This is because, of course, processes are never perfect. You must account for a number of products being broken in the warehouse. But how many do you account for? What is the probability of each product breaking? To address this, students model and address variability and risk in decision-making processes with stochastics. And just so you know, this is one of the deepest mathematics courses needed by industrial engineers. But next we have the star of the industrial engineering curriculum, modeling and optimization. We've already talked about it a little bit, but here students engage with more sophisticated mathematical techniques to formulate models that simulate industrial scenarios, which provides a structured approach to problem solving and decision making in industrial settings. Now, even in the simplest decisions, industrial engineers quickly create a mathematical model to decide on variables and parameters for optimized results. In these courses, you might start with simple models like a coworker taking a few more cookies every day. But as we saw with the warehouse example earlier, there is a huge need for dense mathematical modeling to aptly analyze the most efficient way forward. Whether it be warehouses, ice cream trucks, fighter jet production lines, or even Disney World lines, all of them require mathematical modeling and optimization. But to generate these models, you'll need some solid software skills. Industrial engineers should expect lessons in Python, database languages like SQL, simulation software like Arena, and modeling programs like Cplex. Certainly, there are other significant math, programming, and engineering courses that offer real-world applicability to your career. However, the ones we just mentioned are basically the ones you need for industrial engineering career. Now, before we get into the real-life tasks and processes of industrial engineers, you might want to know what else you can do right now to become a better industrial, or really any type of engineer. For that, our sponsor Brilliant has a solution for you. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform that genuinely makes learning fun. I've been using the mobile app to brush up on relativity, and it quickly made me realize how much I loved these topics, and how much I've forgotten since college. But no matter if you're trying to brush up on old subjects like me, you're a newbie to STEM, or you're already an engineering guru, you can learn everything from large language models for AI, to creative coding solutions, to actual intuitive understandings of algebraic graphs. Brilliant has generously agreed to get you started today for free for 30 days and will grant the first 200 insiders that sign up 20% off an annual plan by simply using the link we've added in the description below. Now, if you want to up your game and become the best engineer that you can be, check that link in the description. And now it's time to dive into that real life industrial engineering process. Let's take a look at a Tesla warehouse as they manufacture their world-class electric vehicles. An industrial engineer understands the extremely long list of optimizational issues at hand. They have to cover the efficiency of processes, the cost of materials, forecasting future materials needed, ensuring orders are accurate and on time, all stations are working properly, and more. Let's say our engineer is tasked with increasing the production from 90 cars a day to 100 without hiring any more operators and buying little to no new equipment. So basically, they need to make the process more efficient to get more out of it without introducing any new costs. Our industrial engineer might start by walking around the manufacturing floor and taking notes and data as the floor operators are at work. They use a stopwatch to time processes, watch machines and operators as they work, and more. Our engineer can start by identifying and getting rid of waste, like eliminating unnecessary movements for the machines, products, or operators. Our engineer here has a keen eye and identifies that the car takes 30 minutes to cool after exiting the body shop, where it's welded and bonded together before it can be painted. Our engineer hurries back up to the office to their arena simulation of the entire manufacturing line and finds that an array of heavy duty fans could be added to reduce this time down to five minutes, not too shabby. After this, the engineer continues using their curriculum tools to create a mathematical model to better understand the waste in the facility finding that 1 in 100 cars have to be trashed solely from a single machine's errors. A great find. After rerunning the arena simulation, they find that these two changes put them over the top and will produce over 100 cars a day. Task completed. All in a day's work for an industrial engineer. Now, of course, the process was simplified for the video, but this is about what you can expect if you want to enter the career. Now, you might be noticing something very peculiar about industrial engineering. It isn't much like the other engineering fields we've covered on this channel. Where is the design process? What product can they stamp and put their name on? Where are the dense physics or chemical processes? This is what makes industrial so unique. Rather than creating robotic arms, rocket ships, or the newest iPhone, they're behind the scenes on each of these projects. They make manufacturing, moving, and selling more efficient, ensuring that everything is running as smoothly as possible 
and basically managing the flow of products. So if you wanna do that nitty gritty engineering work to design electric vehicles, Instagram algorithms, or the next multi-core processor, industrial engineering might not be for you. But if you're someone who enjoys the business side of things, optimization, statistics, and working with and managing people, industrial might be perfect for you. But before we go, let's talk about some dollar signs. How much do these engineers make? They pull around $100,000 a year on average, with early career engineers expecting north of $71,000 and senior engineers earning around $135,000 a year. But what about the job outlook? Well, this field is actually expected to see a ton of growth, expanding with a substantial 12% in the coming decade to open up almost 23,000 jobs a year. Now, some might say this salary isn't enough. What else does industrial have to offer? To which we always answer, follow your interests and the pay will come. But a more interesting point would be to tell you the fact that many industrial engineers actually transition to becoming high management. Yep, we're talking CEOs of your very own company. But why do they commonly become CEOs? Think about it. They analyze every corner of a business's product, learning the standards of production, how it's run, and what other companies are doing and lacking. This is a perfect launch pad into starting your own company or moving up the chain into becoming a CEO or other high management of an existing company. Just remember to give us credit when you're at the top. Now, if you like this video, make sure to check out other engineering fields in this So You Want To Be playlist or this video to figure out exactly how to get that first real engineering job or internship. Thanks for watching and happy engineering everybody.